Okay, take a look at these two pictures. Can you spot the difference? I'm sure you can, and especially if you watch the previous video, uh, you'll be able to see that the picture on the left-hand side is a clear depiction of constant velocity, the same amount of distance being covered with each frame in the photograph uh, or film. And on the picture on the right, you've got a larger amount of distance being covered with each frame, and that indicates that the velocity is increasing or we've got acceleration. Right. Uh, we're looking at calculations you can do with distance time graphs and velocity time graphs. Uh, from the previous video, we'll have reviewed these four types of graph, and you should be able to look at them and immediately tell what's going on in them. Uh, if, if that's not the case, you could probably do with going back and watching the previous video. Okay, I'll give you a second to read these learning objectives. If I were you, I'd pause them, pause the video, and just have a quick read through of what this video is aiming to achieve for you. Right, let's have a quick reminder of the basic formula that we've been using. Uh, velocity is equal to change in distance divided by time and acceleration is change in velocity divided by time taken. Uh, so you might get a unit like meters per second or miles per hour for velocity. My car was doing 50 miles per hour down the road and I set off the speed camera and got into trouble or acceleration would be change in velocity over time taken so you might say something like my car can do 0 to 60 in 20 seconds because it's really rubbish um, just a quick reminder uh, we will be covering in more detail the difference between velocity and speed uh, but at the moment uh, we'll, we'll leave it for now it will be covered in a, in a later video hopefully but just remember for now they are not the same thing Okay, so we should recognize this graph from the previous video. Uh, it's distance covered and time taken. And we've got a straight line, so it's constant velocity. And from this, we can calculate the velocity of the object. Velocity is change in distance divided by time taken. So if I read off the graph a change in distance, as represented by this purple line, and divide it by the time it took for that change in distance to happen, so if I again read off the graph the change in uh, time, now represented by this uh, blue line, uh, I can count off the number of squares in between each section and give myself uh, some figures to work with. Just a quick pointer, a lot of students do when they're reading uh, the distance covered uh, or the time taken, will end up just reading uh, the number here uh, or the number here and sometimes in the question it's very specific, it says how far or what was the velocity of the vehicle between uh, 5 seconds and 15 seconds, or like between this point and this point, uh, and pupils will sometimes um, forget to subtract the uh, this number for, or this number from this number. So uh, here I've only counted the four squares, I haven't counted 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, whatever. So just a, a quick point, I don't make that mistake. So we're just measuring the distance covered in a certain amount of time divided by the time it took for that distance to be covered. Now if I stick these numbers into my calculator, I get an answer. The velocity is equal to 1.225 seconds. Uh, unfortunately, this won't get me very many marks in an exam, and uh, for a variety of reasons. The first reason is, is as I've read off my graph, I could only read to point uh, to, to one significant figure. Here I've got the answer 4.9, or the figure 4.9. Uh, so I cannot have an answer that has a greater number of significant figures, um, as it's misrepresenting the accuracy of the answer. So I have to stay to the same number of significant figures. And secondly, an answer without units is completely meaningless. So I've got the answer here, velocity is equal to 1.225. But 1.225 what? That could be melons, uh, oranges, apples, meters per second, meters per minute, miles per year. So we have to have, spe we have to be specific. So here is a much better answer. I've... Uh, got my answer to the correct number of significant figures and because uh, the well, I've rounded it down I haven't gone 1.3 I've gone to 1.2 because the one to the second significant figure wasn't above five uh, so I've got my answer is equal to 1.2 and the units vitally important the units meters per second now I recommend you do this in all your exams write down whenever you've got a question with a numerical answer write the word answer equals the number and the units. So you get a mark for units and you get a mark for the correct answer and also you get marks for writing down the formula and, and various points like that. Right, so we've done distance time graphs and how to calculate the velocity. Now let's have a look at a velocity time graph. Uh, 